out just off the Gold Coast, fishing some of the shallow reefs here, and it's pelagic season, which means there's a whole raft of predators cruising past the coastline chasing bait. And there's lots of ways to catch them. You can drift pillies for them, you can troll hard body lures, you can do all sorts of things. But today, we're trolling bait. So we've gone out really early this morning, couldn't show you because it was in the dark, it wasn't that exciting. We caught our string of live baits. We've got 10 fish kicking around in the back live well. And now the aim is to troll those at different depths in the water column, see if we can G up some of the local predators. I'm out with one of the local young guns. He's going to show me what he's been doing lately to catch a few. Stick around, I reckon that's going to be pretty good. Should have taken a run by now. First light, we've got the Gold Coast in the background. I'm out with one of the local gurus, mate, the young guns, Jaden. He uh, spends his time trolling baits around the, the shallow reefs, and well, the deeper reefs for that matter as well, but a lot of time in these inshore reefs chasing all former pelagics. It's an exciting time of year when they start cruising past chasing these herds of bait fish with the spring and summer currents. And uh, if you do it right, you're in for a lot of fun. He's come here to teach you an old dog a few tricks, hopefully. We'll get this one in the boat. Mate, there's the, uh, the six o'clock to Sydney out of the Gold Coast. Yeah. And uh, I'd much rather be here playing with these. Um, yellowfin on baits, mate. It's, uh... Yeah, it's sort of, um, too real slow to start with. Just act like sort of dead weight. And then, you know, it saw the boat, it sort of Decided realized. Decided to have a, a, bit, a bit of a play up. And uh, it was a bit of a surprise. We thought, is that bait getting nervous? And then the rod started bending up, bending yeah. up. We didn't actually take drag for a while until Jaden said, hang on, mate, I got ya. And you're coming to me, aren't they? Magnificent fish, and a lot of guys chase them on skirts and hard body lures, but yeah, they grab a bait. Lies. Sweet, that's a start. All right, mate, we're off the mark. <laughs> I like it. Well, the rain scores have kicked through, which is pretty typical in Queensland in summertime. Beautiful one minute bucketing the next. In the meantime, the surface bait we've had has been absolutely drilled. And Jaden's working hard. That's what we bought you for, mate. A bit of young enthusiasm. <laughs> there you go, mate. Yeah, all right. Having fun? Yeah. Been in school. Today we're using the new range of the, the Live Fiver Tex Allium Wilson's rods. This is the 8 to 30 kilo model. She's pretty grunty. It's a, it's a really good rod to be trolling these live baits with, both on the downrigger and up high, because you've got so much low down grunt strength, but you've got a fairly tippy rod up the top, which lets you sort of finesse those live baits a bit and fish can come onto them without necessarily feeling the brunt of the rod straight away. Oh. We did it the hard way, mate. <laughs> the good fighters are the best of times when you, uh, you wind it back sideways. Yeah. Do a tough, still a beautiful fish, mate. That's a bit chunkier than the last one. Yeah. They're getting bigger. Once again, he's eating, eating that yakko that we've been trolling up on the surface line. Giving you a bit of a workout, mate. Yeah, I was hoping for a cove's end, but uh... <laughs> when you wind tuning back sideways, they, they start becoming all sorts of other things. Anyway, yeah. it's a great fish. <laughs> Jaden, how's that? Crashed uh... all in the down rigger ball. Been annihilated. Which is interesting because it was around the tide turn and we'd seen a lot of bait activity up the top and it all went a little bit quiet. A lot of the guys who were trolling around us have all anchored up and they're drifting baits. We put a downrigger down to 18 metres and we're fishing in 20, 21 metres. So we've got a bait right down sneaking along the bottom and that's where the sound has been showing a few arches popping up and we've tempted something. <laughs> We've tempted a bit of rain as well, ducking in between little squalls coming through at the moment. But you never mind getting wet when you're getting bites and catching fish. It's a really nice outfit to be doing this on. It's 8 to 15 kilo Texalium from the Wilson stable, loaded with 15 kilo platypus mono. And the only thing now between us and the fish, there's no weight because of the use of the downrigger. We just got a little two hook. Here we go. 
It's gonna be cranky. A little two hook mustard rig, bit of wire, stop the bite offs. And a rig yak has been whacked. You'll notice the action of this rod. It's pretty stiff, so about that three quarter point of the rod and then you've got a really nice soft tip. And when you're fighting fish like this, it becomes invaluable because I've got plenty of authority down the bottom. I can turn a fish around, but if that fish suddenly turns around like those runs he's just given me now, or throws head shakes, all that pressure gets absorbed and that nice soft tip. They're very well designed to help you get fish into the boat, both in power and sensitivity. It's a really nice balance. And so much in fishing is about balance. You get your balance right, you catch more fish. Fish is pretty much doing its thing now. It's a case of just not going too hard on, on the drag. We've got it pretty well set. Using the Shimano, it's a Leica 20. It's a very well matched reel to use with these Texaliums. It's eight to 15 kegger. And you just want, you, know, you want to absorb any sudden move that the fish has with regards to head shake or sudden run. You just don't want it to be too abrupt on the tackle. And you've got to watch things. Here we go, he's going to wake up a bit here. I don't like the, never like the look of the boat in you. So they always sometimes save a bit for that just at the end. And that's when it's really imperative that you've got your drag setting right. You just don't go too, too hard on them and don't give them enough flex. And that, that's the beauty of using the mono too. You've got that added stretch, but you still don't want to go too hard on them. Oh, that magnificent fish coming up. Nice Spaniard, here we go. He's gonna go under the boat. Another really nice factor with these rods is they've got a bit of length about them. And when you are in a small trailer boat like we are today, five and a half metre boat, you sometimes got to do a bit of ducking and weaving around your motor and under the boat. You really just don't want your line to be touching the hard stuff. So if you've got a rod with a bit of length, it just allows you to steer fish and keep that line away from props and boats. It saves you a lot of lost fish in the long run. <laughs> Lovely, JD. There's the result. Getting your bait down the right depth where these guys are hunting. So much about picking whether they're up high or low. And the beauty about what we've done today is we've covered the water column. We've had that bait up high and we've also had the downrigger down, looking at the sounder, working out where we're seeing arches and getting it down. In that case, 18 metres of water in a 20 to 21 metre deep reef. So the downrigger, very important tool. You want to get live baits down to these guys. And isn't he a magnificent fish? They do get a lot bigger than that, but they all, they all account for themselves really well. And if you are going to eat them, mate, I'm a big fan. I reckon this is about the best eating size. Yeah, perfect. And uh, that's where he's going today. You and me, barbecue at your house. You're a local, you can uh, show me the local recipes, mate. That's well worth the effort of getting a bit wet. And getting Definitely. Up and the rig we're using to set up these liveys for towing behind the boat is very simple. We've got obviously a length, start with a length of single strand using 60 pound. And to attach your hooks, it's a case of just wrapping that wire around 10 times and then cutting it fine. And that will hold any hook you put in place. Now, the top of the bait is obviously our mustard 3.0, big red. Okay, that's what we use to pin through the nose of the bait. And then we use a treble to secure the back of the bait. Usually the, around the belly to the tail of the bait is where we want that to sit. And it's surprising how often fish will come up and that's 90% that's of the time, you're gonna find that your fish are getting hooked on that, which is one of the reasons why we haven't got a lead bit of wire at the front or have fish like that before. But you tend to find that on, on sometimes quite a lot of days, you'll find that tends to put the fish down a little bit. So you may risk the odd bite off, by getting a mono straight to that top red hook, but you typically get a lot more bites fishing your rig like that. And the only other variation that we can use to that is to sometimes put a floating treble, which we've got attached to this rod at the back here. So there's the options on the rig, very simple, but very effective. Well, mate, we talked through the rig that we're using. Yeah. You want to show me a funky way of rigging these guys up so we can catch a fish on it. It's not really too hard, it's just pretty simple, you just get Front hook. Yep. Nostril. In between the nostrils. Yep. So that lets him keep breathing while yep. you're trolling. Nice. All right. Secure that. Hold that for you. We've obviously matched the rig 
to the bait. To the bait. Yep. So he's going to be well fitted. And then and treble. Just make sure you have a bit of slack in your wire. Just pin them in the back. Now we keep slack in the wire so that when the rig's tight, everything lies nice and nice yep. and straight. Okay, so nose rig, bit of wire, mustard ultra point yep. pinned in the back, and now test the boat. Yeah. So good. You just put it next to the boat and yeah, I'll just swim it. I've got my bait rigged and it's swimming nicely through the water. Now, Jaden set out the surface line on the other side, 30, 40 metres back. What I'm going to do now is exactly the same thing. I'm going to let this bait back same distance, 30, 40 metres, and then when it's out, then I want to rig everything up to my downrigger bomb and get it down to the depth where I'm seeing some bait and fish sanding on the fish finder. So the bait's far enough behind the boat now. Going to mount that rod in the rod holder. Now this is an important part of connecting my line to my downrigger catch. What I want to do is just run a few twists through that line and rig that loop into the catch on the downrigger bomb. And what that does is it prevents line twisting itself around the catch. And that means then when you get a strike, you're not going to have a foul up of the line and a break off. So once I'm happy, I've got that. I'm now going to come to my release catch. I'm going to push that loop about a centimetre or so into it and clamp it. I've got now a firm grip, but obviously not too tight, so fish can pull that out when it hits. Now it's a case of getting my bomb out, dropping it down to the depth that I want it. Today we're using the Canon Unitrol, and it's nice and convenient. It's pretty manually operated. Once I've released it, I can then slowly feed that down to a depth and it's telling me the metre increments as that bomb goes down. The other thing I want to do is just slightly reduce the drag on my reel so as I let this out, it's actually going to start feeding line off the reel and it's not going to then pull my line connection out that I've already just put into the catch. And out we go. And I'm slowly just watching my metre here, down to seven, eight metres. I've been seeing some fish holding and patches of bait around that 15 to 20 metre mark, so I'm going to put this down to 18 metres and hopefully get my bait right in amongst the action. 14 metres, 15, 16, 17 and 18 metres. Clamp that off. I don't want too much of a belly in that mono between the rod tip and the catch, so make sure everything's tight. Once she's all in action, sit back, let Jaden drive and wait for the sound of line getting ripped out of a downrigger catch. If you're tying your baits behind, all we're doing at the moment is trolling basically as slowly as this motor's going to let us go. It's, it's a very, very slow walking speed if I had to describe it in a nice, easy layman's terms. And if you are out right there and you have got a boat that doesn't like idling too slowly, you will see some guys that troll baits a lot just kick their, their boat in and out of gear just to make sure those baits are just ticking along and looking a lot like just an injured meal that's easy grab grab speed for any mackerel that's cruising by. What we are doing a lot of though is keeping an eye on the sounder and also visual signs of birds and bait, just trying to pick up the best trolling lines possible. Wherever we are seeing bait at a certain depth on the sounder, because we've got the downrigger out the back, it's really, really easy for us just to adjust and hopefully hook up just like we have. On that trolling run, we came across a really nice ball of bait and we're able to run that downrigger pretty well at the base of it. And it's interesting that we had a surface bait out and we had the downrigger beneath the bait ball and the one that got cracked was the downrigger and it looks like it's a really good fish. So, you know, quite often we see predators like your mackerel and your tuna feeding on top, but 80% of their time they're feeding down deep. And if you don't have a tool like a downrigger on board, you're putting yourself out of the, out of the running for hooking a lot of those better fish that are sometimes eating or, or spending the majority of their time feeding down deep. So use of your sounder, use of your eyes for current lines where birds might be sitting up high, they all tell you where you've got to fish. And then it's a case of once you've hit your spot, look what your sound is telling you. And make sure you've got a bait up top and down below as well. Cover all your bases. Get it right. Winding in fish. Well, someone is anyway. The quicker one in the boat. <laughs> what is that? The spanner? Yeah, pig spaniard. Nice. Take your time there, mate. Yeah. Oh, yes. Look at that. Well done, mate. That's well deserved. Thanks. We've uh, persevered with the weather. 
it's been well worth the effort. Just by fishing baits through that water column, some deep, some high, obviously looking at the structure and working the bait, and being smart about it, we've come up with the goods. There you go, mate, you happy with that? Yep, stoked. Me too. <laughs> Well, there you go, look at that. Beautiful little brown trout. Well, not so little, all of a pound and a half, I'd say. Maybe a pound and a quarter. Hit that flat minnow. Natural color, about 65 millimeters long, I think. And it's just perfect for these little shallow metropolitan lakes. This fish would have been stocked by fisheries in here. And quite a few of them actually go over the dam wall and populate some of the creeks and rivers that flow out of the Dandenongs, make for good fishing further down. Get this lure out of this guy and let him go, eh? There we go. Well, I'm pretty, I'm pretty chuffed about that. That's about as good a brown trout as I've got in some of our close metropolitan dams around Melbourne for quite a while. Good on you. You nailed him, mate. Yeah, it's it took like a solid little fish, too. Yeah, it took, took a few cars. Yeah, what a crack of little fish. Whoa, yeah, we got him. What a beauty. Just about falling off the. Uh, what a lovely coloured brown. Yeah, right? real nice fish, though. Cracker. Yeah. Good on you. <laughs> crack a little fish. Look at that. Not big. No. But a beautiful little brown trout. Took a, took a few different retrieves, like had to really pull him yeah. quite fast through the water. Exactly. The slower sort of jerky one, he was not interested in at all. Yeah. Mate, it's not the biggest trout in the... Uh, and he nailed that little minnow, like I mean, this is a perfect minnow for what you want to do. Strike Pro 35, yep, smelter. Doesn't, doesn't dive too deep, no, it's no. Just very yeah. shallow under the surface. Well, I noticed the first couple of casts, you just twitched it back, yep. then the cast that you got it on, he actually gave a bit more length, got a bit of bit of action into it, got it working back a couple of twitches when it actually dived. Yeah. And the fish trout just took it, no problems at all. I always release our fish in these small small creeks, sort of um if we um start taking too many out of them they'll um Well I've just lost Mitch but come across one of the nicest pools I've seen in some of these waters bit of size to this one. There could well be a trout in there. Oh! That was a solid hit. Just what rod and tackle to use in these waters, probably up to yourself. I'm using a five foot six light spinning rod. And as you can see, I've sort of got to reach in a bit, so the longer rod for retrieving is actually a little bit better because you can just get down there and work it back. But of course, uh, in a lot of the pools you need to underarm cast. So 
five foot six rod there is a lot better than the longer rod, so it's just a bit of a balance. Overall, I'd probably go for the shorter rod. But as I said, you do need to reach out a bit just to get that lure tracking just exactly where you need it to. Every now and again you'll get a tangle on your lure, like so. Happens all the time. I guess even with the best anglers. Certainly happens with me a lot. Don't bother about bringing the lure back to you and untangling it. Retrieve it to within about a half a rod length, your rod tip, tap your rod. Look at that. That's all you need to do. Pre as and then you can fish. Just a little trick. First cast. He's a good little white oak river trout, this guy. Hey, what a neat fish. Now he has just nailed that first cast without a problem. Here we go. I'm happy with that. Lovely little fish. Strike bro smelter, little 50 millimeter lure, just floats. Natural color, half see through. First cast, bang. How's that, eh? Couldn't be better. So a couple of hints about fishing in these little creeks that run out of the Dandenongs. Use small floating lures. Water's not deep here. This little Strike Pro smelter is just perfect, 50 millimetres long. Natural colours, just seems to be right for the water. Also use a loop knot. I've just attached a lefty's loop knot to the split ring on the nose of the lure. And like you saw then, get your first cast right because the, the pools are so small and the fish are so active in them they're going to take your lure first, first cast. Second and third casts, they're going to be a lot more wary and get a lot less chance of catching a fish. So there you have it, 50 mil lures, 